Good morning, everyone. I hope this finds you well and living your best life in Jesus Christ. Nancy and I were talking the other night, and I realized that I've been in the church for most of my life. And in our church, the Clendenin Advent Christian Church, for around 20 years now. After leaving the church in my youth, I became rather cynical about church in general, and I was absolutely sure I would never feel comfortable in church again knowing what I knew about the inner workings, what I like to refer to as the dark side of a church. I quite clearly remember my first experience in our church and being impressed by what I saw in spite of seeing it through a fog of self-centered and cynical mistrust. What I saw was a real Bible-believing, spirit-filled, grace-singing church. I was surprised people enjoyed being there, floored that they knew the words to the songs and freaked out that they talked about their faith when they weren't at church. I saw spouses doting over each other, children being respectful while still being kids, and people who seemed to actually care about me even though they really didn't know me. It had a tremendous effect on me, and very shortly thereafter I was sold on the Clendenin Advent Christian Church. Well now 20 years or so later I can honestly say that I have seen both sides of churches. I have felt both the joys and the pains of being in church. I have felt the pain of getting ground up in the gears of church politics and leaders leaving members in the dust on decisions that were important, friends uttering harsh words, members ruining their lives in sin and leaving the church, and board meetings that almost seemed like an episode of Jerry Springer. Church hasn't always been pleasant. But while I've watched many people give up on the church and flee from it like a haunted house, nevertheless, I still love the church. And I now find myself in the interesting role of being pastor of our church, something I never dreamed could ever happen a few years ago. Some of the folks who've known me the longest, once they found out that I was in the ministry, and who long ago rejected the church, often ask me, Kevin, have you lost your mind? Well, you know, I kind of hope so. <laughs> that mind was filled with sin and negativity anyway. What I'm doing might confound people, but despite the imperfection and sin inherent in churches, Nancy and I love our church. No one should be surprised that the church is made up of sinners. I mean, after all, isn't that the price of admission when we admit we are not perfect and never will be in this life? At its best, the church consists of sinners who are sincerely but imperfectly following Christ. And inevitably, the church also has people who are truly not following Christ. Even the earliest churches in the New Testament were this way. In the letters to the early churches, Paul outlined a few of their messy problems. Let's review a few of them. People were proud of their gifts, unloving, unwilling to associate with other races. Some were involved with lawsuits. Some were getting drunk during communion. Imagine having that problem. Some were living in sexual immorality, and even others were sleeping with their own family members. I mean, Paul actually told one church that their meetings did more harm than good. That's pretty harsh. And yet, in spite of this, Paul was not derailed by any of these things, and he certainly didn't give up on the church. In 1 Corinthians 11.19, he said these differences are necessary to prove who is genuine in their faith. The mess was in line with what the apostles expected, and it should be with us too. We should expect a little mess. So why do I love the inconvenient, messy, and sometimes painful expression of Christ's body? Well, there's a lot of reasons. First of all, it forces me to grow. It forces me to find love for those who are really hard to love. See, the church's diversity is a beautiful thing, and a part of that beauty is that it grows us by bringing us into communication and orbit with people unlike us, sometimes with people who are pretty hard to love. I've said it before, loving lovable people is easy. Associating with unlovable people in unlovable situations will always make us marvel at the love of Christ. It forces us to grow in knowing and sharing that love. In the mess, we find beautiful displays of friendship, compassion, humility, and reconciliation. These would never have been seen apart from the mess that we go through. The second thing is it reminds me that we're all human and we can fail. 
some of the worst things I've seen in church were caused by people who had fallen away or who were falling away from the faith. Seeing the result of their actions was pretty sobering. Then I realized that most of these people causing scenes were struggling in their faith. Often they, their struggle was a matter of who was going to be in charge, them or Christ. This aroused compassion in me rather than judgment, and it made me want to pray for and help them. If I'd left the church at the first glimpse of trouble, I would not have understood the root issue of the problems or the vital importance of striving in faith side to side with other imperfect Christians. The third thing is it prepares me to love others. I have become, admittedly, more gracious and less judgmental than I've ever been. I have learned to work through disagreement when it occurs. This lesson has been massive, not just in church settings, but in how I act with my family. I have learned to love better, more fervently, and more consistently. If you've not had a reason to question loving the church or others in the church, then your love really hasn't been tested. Great lessons happen in the life of the church. And then fourth, it teaches me to love what God loves. The greatest and most important reason why I love the church is that God loves the church. Christ loves his bride, his holy ones for whom he died, to purchase with them with his own blood. If the one who had to die to make us holy is not ashamed to call us brothers, how can we refuse to love those who are sinners just like us? God's plan to make his grace known to the world is not for a bunch of perfect people living together in perfect harmony, but rather for sinful people who cling desperately to Christ, even in the hardest instances. God's light may not shine in every corner of the church, but it still shines all around. When the church looks to Jesus for help in our helplessness, powerful things can happen. Paul saw the mess in each of the churches and he still gave his life to build them. The reason we love the church and all of its mess and all of its baggage is because it's there that we see God's amazing grace conquering our sins and transforming us to look like his son. When the world sees that, when the world sees sincere, imperfect people trying their best to be like Christ, let's face it, it makes Jesus look pretty good. I hope you make today a terrific day. I want you to remember that I'm here if you need me. And I love you all.